Welcome to our kitchen where the famous Anna Kayo, the celebrated Cantonese gourmet chef, is whipping up something marvelous for us this morning. But that's just one of the tantalizing morsels we have for you this morning on Good Day Pittsburgh. <laughs> Good morning, and welcome to Good Day Pittsburgh with Eleanor Shano White and Tom Peterson with news. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday to you. This gourmet cooking is just one of the things that we're going to be doing this morning. We're also going to have a return visit with Victoria Bond, the uh, lovely woman who is the conductor of the Pittsburgh Youth Symphony. But right now, it's time to take uh, a little bit of time out and visit with Tom Peterson for our mid-morning news update. Tom? Good morning, Eleanor, and good morning, everyone. A 90-year-old Southside Pittsburgh woman, Anna Sixnius, was found frozen to death yesterday by her son, John. The woman's gas had been turned off last summer because of a faulty gas line to the home. Equitable Gas Company says if there is a gas leak, it is company policy to have the resident make the necessary repairs. A clogged flue is being blamed for fumes that killed an East Liberty woman, Dorothy May Adams, yesterday. Her husband, Odyssey Cunningham, is in a local hospital in guarded condition, suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning. A 33-year-old Beaver County man, Daniel Stephan, is being held on charges in connection with the murder of Beaver County psychiatrist Dr. Robert Yee in the physician's office in New Brighton yesterday. A 27-year-old Beltsuver Pittsburgh man, Howard Washington, was shot and killed last night. City police have charged another Beltsuver man, 29-year-old Robert Hodge, in that slaying. Allegheny County Coroner Dr. Cyril Wecht has charged a conspiracy designed to keep him from winning a county commissioner's seat. He lashed out at the Pittsburgh Press and a reporter for the paper yesterday for implying wrongdoing in the use of county-owned toxicology equipment located at Duquesne University by Chief Coroner's toxicologist Dr. Charles Winnick. Meanwhile, the county commissioners have given County Controller John Lynch $25,000 with which to audit the WEC Special Education Fund. Lynch will first make a determination if there are any public funds in that account before he audits the fund. Former Democratic State Representative Adam Bittinger of Cambria County has been indicted by a Pittsburgh federal grand jury on charges he drew $6,300 in salary from the House before he was elected and for which he never actually performed any work. Governor Thornburg has criticized the White House for overreacting to planned pay increases for state officials. The governor defended the pay hikes yesterday. Water has now been restored in Robinson Township after a service shut off yesterday because of a mysterious taste in that water supply. An attorney for former Pennsylvania Congressman Joshua Eilberg has argued that statements made by Eilberg last fall to the House Ethics Committee should not be admitted as evidence in his forthcoming trial. Supporters of the Shah of Iran and opposition leader the Ayatollah Khomeini clashed during a pro-Shah demonstration in Iran this morning. Troops with bayonets on their rifles broke up the scuffles. Gold prices eased off today after a hectic week of trading that saw gold prices reach an all-time high yesterday. And with the Mardi Gras just one week away, more than 400 police officers in New Orleans are on strike this morning, and the city's trash collectors may walk the picket line on Sunday. In sports, B.B. Flannery, Duquesne Duke's leading scorer, has been demoted to second string because of his failure to play against West Virginia the other night. Stan Saverin now has a comment on the big sports paychecks and their effect on the future of professional sports. Pete Rose signs for $800,000. Dave Parker signs for Lord knows how much money. Can a million dollar a year contract be far behind? Now, obviously baseball is on the road to financial self-destruction. The course of events must be altered, so I propose a change in baseball rules. Why not introduce the incentive clause? Professional football uses it, and it has been highly successful, satisfying owners and players alike. For example, Dave Parker signs a base contract with several incentive clauses written in. For instance, if Parker hits 300 in the season, he is given a $25,000 bonus. If he hits 325 or over, he gets an additional $50,000. If he wins the batting title, he gets another bonus. If he hits X amount of home runs or has X amount of RBI, again, a bonus. Now, obviously, base salaries and incentives vary with each player. You could also include fielding bonuses. Now, it might not give the owners a chance to save a lot of money in the long run, but it will save on initial cash outlay and extended deferred payments. One of the things inherently wrong with baseball contracts now is that the players are paid on what they did last year or in past years. This way, the player would be paid on current performance. 
Now, you might say, well, the players will be thinking only of money and not team performances, but hey, aren't we approaching that now? For Good Day Pittsburgh, this is Stan Saverin. I've looked forward to this morning for a long time. I've been anxious for years to meet Anna Kayo, truly uh, famous, and I mean famous, Cantonese gourmet chef. And uh, Anna, this morning you are making palace chicken. Right. I understand that is the favorite dish of the premiere, right? Right, that's right. And uh, he likes hot, spicy food. Is Cantonese uh, cooking, is, is it hot and spicy? Is that the difference between Cantonese and other uh, forms of Chinese okay, food? Okay, the Cantonese food is uh, blended. It's not spicy at all. And the, the Sichuan and the Hunan dish is spicy. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, the Chinese cooking, there's about six different styles. You have uh, Hunan, you have a Cantonese and Mandarin, and uh, Shanghai and uh, Fukien, uh, all different kind of province there. What is the big difference between mm -hmm. Chinese cooking and uh, Polynesian? Because we have a lot of Polynesian restaurants here in the Pittsburgh area. Right. Uh, the Polynesian, uh, Polynesian cooking is uh, uh, from Chinese uh, from Chinese cooking became to uh, Polynesian. It they changed in uh, Hawaii. They put a lot of sweet and sour sauce, mm -hmm. the pineapple, mm -hmm. or tomato paste, those kind of things. Yeah. I think I'm talking too much to you, and our oil yeah. is getting very hot. And yeah, we, can <laughs> yeah, we we leave here because this stove is not uh, hot enough. I rather have uh, the oil hot. Okay? okay. Now first, I'm going to do the palace chicken, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of people um, like to know how to debone the whole chicken with only four cut and you really don't have to go to the supermarket and pay so much triple double money let a chef do that for you and the whole chicken you buy the whole fry here and first you get a one cut as in the back and get a one cut in the front in the chest near the wishbone here okay then and the joints in the shoulder and the wing you cut one slit here separate in like that and that's a hole there then you pull See the whole chicken breast come out and the whole skin come out? See how easy it come out like that? Oh my heavens. Now See you're going to do that again on the other side so we can get another look at that. Oh, okay, you? sure, sure. I do slow sure. this time, okay? I to bone a chicken yeah. with just four cuts. Just four cuts. Okay, now that's such. The wing joints in the shoulder again mm -hmm. and separate them and tore to the wishbone. And then here, near the wishbone, that's a hole. You put your thumb inside and just go ahead and pull. See? How oh, you make it look so easy. See how easy they are? And then you cut them up and dice them one inch cube. Mm -hmm. And then you combine with the marinade. And this is the marinade already done. Okay. Now what yeah. kind of a marinade do you uh, have? In? The marinade we will use uh, cornstarch and the soy sauce. And we have a recipe here. And the recipe will be available for the audience. And they can sell, you know, send to us the self-address envelope with a stamp. Very and, good. Okay. So you just send, mm -hmm. uh, send that self-addressed mm -hmm. stamped envelope right, uh, right. In, mm -hmm. to Anna Kyle in care of Good Day Pittsburgh. And we'll get those rec this recipe out to you right away. OK, this is the cornstarch and, and the soy the sauce soy. and the little pieces and of chicken. chicken. Now, since the oil is getting hot now, I'm going to stir fry the chicken first, OK? Mm -hmm. now. Shovel there. Okay, hold hold it steady now. Hold okay. hold like that okay. because the oil, this pot is tipping. I don't like anything happen. So how fast? That is hot oil. Mm. And stir fry only about actually one minute, but this is a lot of oil. I do very fast on television. Only stir fry about a five seconds will be all right. And you take them off. Just come mm. back again. Okay, in the meantime, in the meantime, yeah, we'll pull the oil off too. Okay. And now do why slowly. Are you pouring the hot oil over that? Uh, well, the chicken is not completely cooked. So we pour the oil gradually, and besides, you don't, you know, you just gradually go through this chicken, mm -hmm. and you will leave a little bit of oil for your cooking later on. Okay, mm. now the oil okay. is too hot, we'll leave it here, okay? Okay. The next thing is we will use one teaspoon fresh ginger. And this is the ginger you peel already, and then you soak in the dry sherry inside. And fresh uh, ginger. Fresh ginger, and you, you peel it 
you cut into slices, you soak in the dry sherry. Mm -hmm. And the dry sherry will preserve the ginger. Uh, you can keep one year, two year, put in the refrigerator, and you have a ginger sherry, and this ginger mm -hmm. will be preserved. Don't put in the uh, freezer. You put in the freezer, the ginger became a mush. Is it hard to find uh, fresh ginger? Uh, no, any cook in any oriental store, they have it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the oriental store is all over the place in the Pittsburgh now. And you just there not are oriental stores where? all over in okay. uh, Squirrel Hill, in um, uh, Penn Avenue, all the Moravia, all over the place. Okay. We'll oh, does that smell good? <gasps> mm, that we'll ginger. One teaspoon ginger, mm -hmm. and we chopped them already. Put here, and mm -hmm. we will use uh, two scallion cut into one inch pieces. Mm -hmm. and smash them a little bit. Turn around. Smash them a little bit, and this way you cut in the one inch piece, the flavor will go inside very fast. Mm -hmm. Do it that way. And that's a two hot chili, dry chili, hot pepper. I crush them. Do never, never crush the hot pepper with the finger, otherwise, you get um, burn your skin, especially if you have a contact lens. Ah, and you put in plastic bag. That's and a you good crush, idea. Crush I never like thought that. of that. Yeah, like that. Okay. Mm. Now we'll go you can also do that with the uh, onions, couldn't you? Uh, no, you don't need onion. You need to cut up. You don't need to uh, crush them. Or how about garlic? I mean, uh, anything garlic, that's... no, you don't have to. But the Just garlic the doesn't pepper. burn your skin. Only the, this one, okay. the hot pepper, will burn your skin. Now, in the recipe, we have a seasoning sauce, the soy sauce, dry sherry, cider vinegar, water. It's a lot of ingredients there. Mm -hmm. And you mix up together, and you combine this seasoning together that, like that, mm -hmm. and mix well before you use. And the next one, and we stir fry the vegetable. Now, we will use about half a cup of uh, uh, fried uh, peanuts. Oh, I, peanuts, not yeah, almonds. peanuts. We don't work well, this palace chicken, they use peanuts, mm -hmm. and some other you know, chicken use almond. Mm -hmm. Now these peanuts, I don't recommend you uh, toast them. If you toast them, uh, when you mix with the food, with the sauce, and before you finish eating, they get soggy already. So uh. you fry them, meantime you fry the nuts, you make the nuts very crispy, because oil fry outside layer crispy. Mm -hmm. And meantime, when you fry them, the, the fat from the peanuts mm -hmm. out too. Mm -hmm. So you eat less oil for that, okay? Obviously, all this fried Cantonese food is not fattening because, look, you are such a little bitty, bitty person. <laughs> well, and actually, I'm not only special uh, Cantonese food. I went to six and a half year Chinese cooking school and specialized Mandarin and Hunan and Sichuan and uh, all of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, um, in my restaurant, we serve six different styles. I pick up all the favorite ones, the famous recipes served in the restaurant. Now, okay. Okay, yeah, you stir fry like that, and you add chicken inside. Is it absolutely necessary to have the right utensils to, to right, cook this kind of food? Right. But actually, the people, they complain, you really don't have to. You can, if you know how to do it, and you can use a skillet, you can do it. And uh, if you have an electric wok, even I can mm -hmm. use a cornmeal stove. I never imagined I can use a cornmeal stove, you know, to cook the Chinese cooking. Oh. But I, I did that. Anna, palace and chicken. Sauce it there looks inside. beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're mm -hmm. going to switch out to Hollywood right now. We go sure. out every day to visit with yeah. Tony Holt, and she has all kinds of information about the stars. And we're going to come back, and we're going to visit with you again, and with Victoria Bond, and we're going to taste this marvelous dish. Yeah. But right now, Hollywood, Tony Holt, come on in. With all the inside news, this is Tony Holt in Hollywood. Joey Travolta completed his first movie, Sunnyside, and ran away to sea with girlfriend Wendy Sean. The couple took a long cruise around the coast of Mexico. Joey explained he had to get away from all the pressures now burdening him. You know, if he thinks he has it rough, he should talk to a real star, his brother John. Tatum O'Neill may be taking the year off from work, but not from play. She and young Leif Garrett have discovered each other and were a nightly twosome before Leif left on his European tour. It all began at the birthday party for Garrett's sister. Margot Kidd, a big at the box office now, is Lois Lane, Superman's lady love, is enjoying a real-life romance of her own. She and Michael O'Donohue, writer for the award-winning Saturday Night Live TV show, are very serious about each other. 
Another romantic duo, rock star Rod Stewart and his current lady, Alana Hamilton, ran into a lot more weather than they bargained for while visiting London. Terribly low temperatures nearly froze them in their light California clothes, but Rod took care of it in grand style. He put out $40,000 to buy Alana and himself fur coats. They were ankle length and had hoods to keep them both warm. Brooke Shields, the teeny bopper sex symbol, now has her first crush on an unidentified male. The 14-year-old is so smitten... Pittsburgh Youth Symphony Orchestra is one of the finest in the world, and this morning we want to welcome its dynamic conductor, Victoria Bond. Victoria, it is so nice to have you back with us this morning. And in recognition of the International Year of the Child, you came up with a rather unique idea, a uh, competition between young people in this area. You discovered something rather interesting. You had more talent than you had counted on, right? Yes, Eleanor. It was very interesting because usually we've had our soloists come from outside. But we decided we would, for uh, what we would find out, have a competition, a young artist competition from within the orchestra, open only to orchestra members, just to see what we had there. And we felt reasonably certain that we would have one winner, and so we scheduled a program accordingly. And the amazing thing was, I think we had about 25 or 30 people who auditioned for it. And there were so many extraordinary talents that we had to revise all of our thinking. There were three. Um, uh, especially outstanding soloists who were so fine we could not decide between the three of them so we decided to let each one of them play a movement of a concerto and uh, then we had so many runners-up that we're going to feature them in our uh, we have a 20th century festival later on in the year in the springtime and we're going to feature them on the 20th century festival so we were really rather overwhelmed by the amount of talent it's quite exciting the three winning soloists will perform tomorrow night that's correct. Concert. Tell us a little bit about these three young people. All right. Well, we have two violinists and a cellist. And uh, Ellen Ginsberg is one of our violinists. And she's going to be performing Saint-Saëns' Introduction and Rondo Capriccioso, a devilishly difficult work, I may add, which she does absolutely extraordinarily well. And uh, Ellen studies in New York as well as in Pittsburgh. She commutes, I believe, every week or every other week to work with her teacher in New York. And uh, she's a big talent, I think. Can you tell us how old she is? Uh, I think she's 15. Oh, I'm, I'm not amazing? absolutely certain of all of their ages, ah. but they're all about the same age. Will, we, will you be interested in watching uh, their futures? Oh, now? of course, of course. It's a fascinating thing. It's almost like, you know, your own child. You, you oh. see somebody in the early stages of their career, and you watch the way they develop. It's very exciting. Now, the Pittsburgh uh, Youth Symphony Orchestra was founded um, back in the early 50s. What is the primary purpose? Is it to help discover uh, and nurture talented musicians? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's to give young people an opportunity of playing in very, very professional circumstances and uh, giving them an opportunity to learn the symphonic repertory and uh, to make music together. I just want to go on for one second and describe the two other soloists yes. that we're, we're going to have. Uh, we have another violinist, Richard Chang, who is Chinese by descent. And uh, I think he's also about 15 years old. And he's going to be playing um, the Vieux Ton Fourth Violin Concerto, the last movement, a very technical, showy, virtuosic piece. And then we have a cellist, Lisa Leininger, whose father, Robert Leininger, is uh, one of the basses, one of the principal basses in the Pittsburgh Symphony. And uh, she's going to be playing the first movement of the Lalo Cello Concerto. Okay, now the concert uh, will be held uh, tomorrow night at Heinz Hall at 8 p.m. Tickets are still available. I understand that uh, anyone interested in uh, attending the concert can, well, it, well, since there isn't much time left, I would suggest that you just call Heinz Hall. There are tickets still available. Uh, this must be an exciting uh, adventure for you, Victoria. Is this the first time that you have worked so closely with young people? With the youth orchestra, yes, it is. Yes. Have I you felt sort of like a mother hen at times? <laughs> well, yes and no, because there isn't all that much age difference between us. And as a matter of fact, um, uh, Mrs. Mazel had made some comment to that in the beginning when I had first came to conduct them and she said she may look as though she's one of you but well, <laughs> don't be fooled by appearances <laughs> so I don't I don't quite have the mothering instinct yet well the the goal as you said is to uh, to give exposure to these very talented young people and uh, 
I am looking forward to the concert tomorrow night, and I, I am sure that many people in our viewing audience are going to thoroughly enjoy it. We are so delighted to have you in Pittsburgh. As we've said before, you are such an asset to our community, and uh, we're just delighted that you stopped by this morning. Now, we are going to take a little bit of time out, Victoria, and then we're going to invite Anna Kyle. Now, I know the last time you were here, we had Ferdinand Metz, oh. and we had, because Victoria is also very interested in cooking, and so we're going to have a little chit-chat, and we're going to give you an opportunity to sample, along with the rest of us, the fantastic stick palace chicken that Anna Kyle whipped oh, up a little earlier. But right now we've got to do the um, horoscope, you know, your daily horoscope for today with Harriet Friedlander from the Sign of Aquarius bookstore in Shadyside. Harriet, it's your turn. Friday, February 9th, Aries. Think before you speak today. You could offend someone without meaning to. Taurus. Keep out of other people's family affairs right now. Your advice may not be wanted. Gemini, do your work in your usual way today. Try new methods at another time. Cancer, give some financial advice only if someone asks for it. Otherwise, keep your opinions to yourself. Leo, step aside and let people do as they please right now. Protect your own interests. Virgo, the less you talk with the so with associates today, the better off you will be. Libra. It could be a waste to, to take chances with your money today. Be cautious. Scorpio. Family members may not understand your attitude right now. Explain yourself thoroughly. Sagittarius. Keep your mind on what you are doing today. Be alert and careful. Capricorn. If you disregard sound advice, you may be the loser. Prevent errors in judgment. Aquarius. Maintain previous gains by using common sense. Being too different could cause problems. Pisces. Make every effort to avoid repeating past mistakes today. Let experience guide you. kitchen right now. Victoria, uh, you have met Anna. Uh, I've got two marvelous, talented people here. And um, we're going to let you taste this palace chicken. And what is this, Anna? You're going to whip... Fry one tun. Okay. I'm going to show, show everyone. one okay, now, okay. okay? Now, the first, uh, this is egg roll wrapper. You cut them into four. Or you can buy the winter wrapper, the size. It's about three inch by three inch size. The reason I mentioned three by three inch uh, some people if the beginner they buy cookbook they don't mention what size in the for the uh, winter wrapper and I have one student before she come to my cooking class she bought egg roll skin the bigger size mm -hmm. six by six inch made one winter and cannot fit in the one bowl <laughs> so, big. so from that time I just tell everybody the size you can buy this in an oriental yeah you can buy it in an oriental okay. store, store and that's a skin you put in about one table a uh, one teaspoon filling there then you wet the corner here and you roll them this way mm. and the skin's a little bit dry now you press them together and you can stick in the corner one wet, wet and just like pinch them together okay like a fried nun then after all you make them and you can fry it like that and when you deep fry 375 degree about two to three minutes and mm. uh, after you fry them you cool them you can put in plastic bag you can keep in the refrigerator when the company come you can heat it up again to serve did you say can you freeze them? yeah you could do that yeah Victoria you were yeah. saying that your father mm. lived in China yes. for a while and that um, he is uh, rather uh, good at Chinese cooking. Yes, he's so quite an expert uh, cook. He's uh, yeah, mm -hmm. studied it, All made right, a science it of it. Yeah. Is it time mm -hmm. to dig in? Yeah, you go ahead, takes now. Okay. <laughs> dig in. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Anna, I'm going to let you serve uh, Victoria and Victoria. Okay. Give her chopstick. I think oh, yes. She's okay. good. Quite yeah. a, yes, yes, quite quite a, a, Give Victoria Victoria Chinese chopsticks. Yomio quite <laughs> Okay, so it's not that much spicy, okay? You can try on it, yeah. Mm. See how tender they are. I'm going to give you a bowl Look and let you try. Look at this. Oh, how... Mmm, ding kwa kwa. A ding kwa kwa. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Thank you. Mm. It's very tender. Is that Fantastic. right? Fantastic. 
Good, yeah. very good. Okay. You were not here earlier, Victoria, but uh, Anna was telling us that uh, mm -hmm. this is the uh, Chinese premier's favorite dish. He mm. likes hot spicy. Hot spicy. I, I agree with right. him. It's excellent ah. taste. Good, now. Okay, that's for you. Mm. Mm. Marvelous. This is my very favorite food peanuts. in the whole uh, world. So you can taste the peanuts now. We've been mm. put there about at least 10 minutes now. It's still crispy. Is that mm. right? This is a combination right. of east and west. It's got the peanuts for Jimmy Carter. <laughs> and the spice. <laughs> oh, good. It's a good way I had the chicken about that. Spice for me. Right. <laughs> we want to tell you again that uh -huh. if you're interested in this recipe, uh, you just uh, send a self-addressed envelope to Good Day Pittsburgh, and uh, right. we'll whip it out to you right away. Uh -huh. It's one of the fringe benefits of doing this show. I can take the recipe recipe home. <laughs> Guess what I'm going to do this weekend? Right. I'm going to do this right. recipe. It's very easy. If you watch me do that, it's very, very mm. easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fresh ginger, too. And Oh, you are marvelous. Pick She's that very up. good. Yes. Well, She's you like to cook, good. don't you? Mm, love to. I don't think you have an awful lot of time. I don't know no. how you would ever manage to find time to spend in the kitchen. But well, uh, my, my leisure time. That's one of my favorite hobbies is cooking. I, I think it's a very creative thing to do. Right. That's why the students come to the heat cooking class, especially the evening students. Uh, they sort of like relax. Do you still have cooking classes oh, now? Oh, yes. I Where teach are they in? At my home, private class. It's a participation class, and uh, we have a morning class, and we have an evening class. Ah, uh, Anna Kyle. And Victoria Bond, thank you so much for livening up our Friday here on Good Day Pittsburgh. We hope that you'll join us uh, on Monday. Now, on Monday, well, we're going to be getting ready for Valentine's Day. That's next Wednesday. So on Monday, we're going to talk about Valentine candy, and then on Tuesday, Valentine's themselves, and uh, a marvelous show on Wednesday. Join us every day, 10.30 to 11, right here on Good Day Pittsburgh. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Mm. This has been Good Day Pittsburgh with Eleanor Shano White and Tom Peterson with news. Join us each weekday morning at 10.30 for a special blend of features and interviews on Good Day Pittsburgh.